Hello, welcome to my podcast, Office Hours with the Math Sorcerer. In this episode, I'm going to be answering a question from a viewer. His name is Michael, and the subject is your video on being in the wrong class. The message reads as follows. I went back to school in my early 30s and was comp sci. I had a bunch of credits from community college when I was in my 20s. I needed to complete the calc cycle for my major, so I audited pre-calc and was fine. I took calc 1 and I did the homework twice. Then I did all the homework again to prep for the test and I failed the test miserably. My wife, a civil engineer who was helping me with the class, looked at the test and said, these problems are nothing like your homework. This is a trick question. I believe that a person will never lift a heavy weight straight into the air while laying on a bench in real life, but they will use those muscles all the time. I felt the same way about math. It's bench pressing for the brain. This class crushed me and I changed my major and got a film degree even though I'm a technician and not really an artist. I cannot lie to myself so I felt like less of a human being because I couldn't pass calculus. I gave up on going into my passion which is physics. I feel like a fraud. Like every time I came up with a novel solution to a problem and someone would say something about me being smart, it meant nothing to me because I knew I couldn't even get through the lowest level of resistance. I'm 50 now. I own an old copy of Swakowski Calculus that I try to look at every couple of years. It was the book my wife used in her undergrad Calc 2, and that's the only math class she ever got a grade as low as a B in. The same book she used. I realize that a person's value isn't based on how they did in a class, and I have no idea how to fix this. I can try and learn calculus on my own, but if it's just me and my book, how do I really assess myself in an unbiased way? Your video on the warning signs really hit me hard. I have autism and it was diagnosed at the time, but it never occurred to me to talk to the professor. I felt it was my failure to adapt and that I lacked something mentally. There's 20 years of soul-crushing feelings of inadequacies that I have been wrestling with. That video might have fixed some of the damage caused by this past misunderstanding. Thank you, Mike. Mike, I'm going to start by saying thank you for reaching out and messaging me. Really appreciate um, your email. I think we can all learn from this. So first, let me just address the feelings uh, you're having. You say you feel like less of a human being because you couldn't pass calculus. So you're wrestling with these 20 years of soul-crushing feelings of inadequacies. There's different types of intelligence in my mind, right? There's, there's different types of smart. There's people who do math and they're very good at math. And there's people who don't do math and they're very good at other things. The longer I live, the more people I meet, the more people I talk to, the more emails I read from viewers all over the world, I realize that people are very smart in very different ways. And so I don't think that you should place value on your intelligence and your capacity based on your ability to do math. As, as much as I love math, and I wanna say that you know if you can do math, um, that that's what makes you great. You know, being able to do math is what makes a strong human being. I don't think that's true. I think math is great and it's wonderful and it's great to be able to do it, but there's other ways to, you know, value yourself. I, I don't think you should place so much emphasis on, on those feelings. You can be really smart and not know how to do math because it's a specific field. Maybe you know how to do something else. In any case, you want to deal with these feelings. So you ask, how do you assess yourself? Well, I think what you can do, and this is pretty good advice, and you'll also get smarter for taking this advice, is to sit down every day and do a little bit of math. Maybe get a timer and do like 30 minutes of math, at least 30 minutes minimum, 
set it for an hour. And if you do 30 minutes and you're tired, you can quit or set it for two hours and, you know, try not to overdo it. Don't make it your whole day. You don't want to burn yourself out. You want to leave yourself wanting more. So if you just do a little bit every day, you'll think about it. You'll enjoy it. You're refreshed. You won't burn yourself out. And then you'll want to do more the next day. If you do, if you overdo it, um, you'll probably need a couple days off. So if you do it every day, it gives you time to process the math and you'll get better at it. So that's a way that you might feel better about having these feelings of inadequacy that you have. But it might not be the solution because the more math you learn, the more you're going to realize you don't know. I mean, you're going to get stuck, right? Math is hard. Another idea would be to maybe take a class. If you took a class on math, maybe just part-time for fun, that could lead somewhere, right? It might lead to another class. It might lead to a certificate of some type. It might lead to another degree. And it might lead to another job. You never mentioned um, what you did for a living. You said you're 50, so I'm assuming you work. I think it's great. You have an old copy of Swalkowski Calculus. That, that's a great book. I have uh, a copy of that book, and it's excellent. He also has other books, which are great. So, yeah, my advice is maybe take a class. I think that's probably the most structured way to do it because self-study is, you know, it's easy for me to say do a little bit every day, but it's different for you to actually do it takes a lot of discipline to do math. And so if you sign up for just a class, maybe a calculus class at your local community college, um, it's really usually not that expensive. If you go to a local community college, it varies by state uh, in the U.S. Um, some states uh, cost more than others. Some schools cost more than others. But most of the time you can go to a local community college and you could take a class um, oftentimes for less than $500, you could take an actual college credit class. Not always. Again, it depends where you live. And, you know, you buy the book and, um, you know, you go to class and learn some math. You could take it online, um, but I think it's better to take it face-to-face because -face you get that interaction. And I think that's a good idea. I, I don't know how you feel about that, about taking another class, but common feeling that people have when they're thinking about going back to school is their age. And you mentioned you're 50. Um, so I don't know if you're having any feelings about that, but in case you are, I just want to say that don't worry about it. Just go back to school, take a class, jump in there with all the 20 year olds, be a rock star. And you know what you should do? What I would do is I would take my copy of Swalkowski's calculus and bring it with me and, and sit in class with the book. Just bring it in there, you know, sit in the front, ask questions, be that guy, right? The 50-year-old with an old copy of Swalkowski Calculus who is back and you're going to crush it, man. You're going to crush it. So yeah, I don't know. Just you can do it, Mike. I'm going to stop this podcast because yeah, such a good email. Until next time, good luck.